We are at BD Riley's, Julian. I'm here with Del Cross. Um, we're recording this on Wednesday. What a week. It's been emotional, dramatic. Uh, it's been it's been intriguing at times. It's been fascinating with all of the, the interviews that Klopp and all of his coaching staff have done. Um, there's been so many uh, little snippets, little videos and tactical videos and, and videos with Klopp and his coaching team. And, uh, it's been, you know, all of that through the past week and not to mention, of course, the game against Wolves at the weekend, which I think couldn't have gone any more perfectly. Um, we generally don't do goodbyes well. Yeah. If I look at, you know, the, the last day of the, clock, of the, sorry, of the cop when we lost that game. Gerard, when he left, you yeah. know, we put in some shocking performances. Um, but this was, we got a clean sheet, which, yeah, is yeah. Like a, <laughs> which is like a big thing. We got a clean sheet. We won the game. I thought it was organized spectacularly well um, yeah. and just seemed to be like a brilliant occasion. But it's, uh, the, season is, the season is over. Klopp and Pep Linders and the rest of the coaching staff have gone and we move on to a new era but Chris it's yeah. been an emotional week it has it's, it's been, been a funny week it's, it's, been, it has. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to kind of describe it as you were kind of talking there I was kind of thinking it's, it has been that sort of week where you're sad and you're happy and you're you don't really know what to be thinking and you're really enjoying the, some of the footage that we got as you say from Klopp and the coach and staff and then all the players and just everything and, and it's all tinged and kind of sadness but the one thing that I think um, stood out to me about Sunday was that I was sad right I'm obviously sad that you know the Klopp era has come to an end um, but there was part of me all through that kind of celebration at the end of it that it really was a celebration there was no mm-hmm. real sadness no, it wasn't. around it and I think that came from the man himself. I think the the kind of aura that he gave off, the feeling and vibe that he he. I, this is probably the wrong word to use, but he seemed nearly relieved that it was over. Oh, certainly. Yeah. You know, he he, he kind of was like, ah, oh, this is like I'm gonna go off now and get a break, and I don't have to think about football. Yeah. I don't have to think about fucking Man City. I don't have to, you know, I just can go off and concentrate on my family, concentrate on myself for a little bit. And you could just see that weight kind of come off his shoulders. And I think for me, that really changed my perspective of looking at that. I thought I was going to be a lot sadder than I was. I was sad, but I thought I would have been a, a bit more cut up. But when I seen him and I heard him talk, I was like, you know what? This man gave every fucking thing he had to the very, very end. And he's happy to be handing it off. It was such a brilliant... Yeah. speech it yeah. was so and you're right he seemed completely relaxed yeah. and he seemed happy with not just the, the the brilliant work that he has done but the fact he's moving on to the next stage of his life and he's able to get away from it now yeah. and take a break however long that's going to be but his speech was, uh, it was it was it was motivational inspirational it was funny yeah. uh, when he started with the uh I've got a. I'm a fan. I've got a song. Yeah, yeah. And he starts leading the chance for we, Arnie Slot. I was. We were at the pub, and at first I wasn't. I wasn't. You know, we we could hear it, but you couldn't hear it. Yeah. Clearly, and I wasn't sure exactly what it was at first. And I was like, oh, he's singing a Slot song, and it was, it was like brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant because it it made you feel pretty good. It made you think, okay, all right, we're moving yeah. on. We're going. We're going on to the next stage and we have the blessing from this fantastic manager no. it was a wonderful wonderful speech yeah no it was and he is and he I think you know what obviously we kind of knew this sort of before this but I think this week in particular really showcased that side of him that he is a phenomenal speaker he yes. engages people he inspires people he's charismatic and you can see all those three. That's what's really led him to be so successful mm-hmm. as a manager and so likable. Yeah. Um, that he's able to speak to everybody. And that's difficult. Yeah. That is a extremely difficult where you can be charismatic, likable, get results, 
and, and you can bet behind the scenes he's a fucking hard bastard yeah, ruthless. and he calls people ruthless. out yeah, as yeah, well yeah. at the same Absolutely. time right and that's a really difficult um, balancing act especially with the people skills yeah. as well because a lot of managers have that that ruthlessness and they get results right but they tend to they don't stay at clubs for a long time for a long time because they don't have them people skills yeah. people can't you know you can't as a player or or even the media you're going to run out of time with these people yeah. and Klopp is able to I mean he's a, he's a manager that's he's left Mainz Dortmund Liverpool on his own terms and I can't think of another manager that's done that and yeah not <laughs> only on his own terms but probably you'd have to fucking travel the length and breadth of each of those countries or each of those clubs to find mm-hmm. somebody that would have a bad word to say about like even opposing fans I would say mm-hmm. even the hardened fucking blue in Liverpool would find it difficult to, to, to begrudge him or to talk bad you know to talk bad about him. and that yeah. and I think that's like you know we've said this before I think that really is that just speaks to the man mm-hmm. uh, that he is extremely um, extremely hard to replace right no doubt whatsoever but what he made clear in the speech this is this is just the beginning yeah. like he's come to he's come to Liverpool we weren't in a great shape beforehand we were in alright you know we were yeah. doing okay but we were kind of you know we were like the nearly men at mm. times and we hadn't been a force for a long time besides of course the, the Benitez Champions yeah, League win force. but then we you know yeah. we weren't there but like he's changed everything I mean you think about before and now you know you look at the stadium you look at the training facilities you look at where we're competing we're in the Champions League again the academy and it's it's so important that the academy continues to do what it's been doing I mean you look this season with the amount of players that have come through and looked comfortable as well I mean starting with um, starting with Ben Doak who got obviously injured early on but you obviously had Connor Bradley. You were Clark. Yeah. Dan's. Clarkson. And then the biggest one. Yeah. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Like he's who, if you ask most <laughs> yeah. non match go well, maybe some match day fans wouldn't know as well that, that follow the youth team. But this time, you know, last year, I don't think anyone would have known about Kwanzaa. No, I didn't even know he was That he was going to start so many yeah. games and no, be no. so comfortable and be one that now I would I would hazard a guess that if you're picking your best 11 at the moment you're probably going to pick Kwanzaa and Virgil and now he's in the England provisional yeah. squad it's been a sensational yeah, season yeah. for our young players and, and I loved what was said in the interviews about favourite moments and the League Cup final having oh. against Chelsea and having so many youngsters fit yeah. right in and look so comfortable and that again is a testament to our academy to our entire coaching staff for how comfortable they are but um, yeah I think that's it the key. was magnificent I think, yeah, I think that's weekend. the key to that whole thing you know it's all right it's all you know plenty of teams will, uh, will bring young fellas through but not very many teams if any can bring young fellas through in that that many at the one time and for them to slot in to a really well oiled machine team Yep. and just go these guys look like they've been playing for and they didn't look out for six years no they, they fit so they fit right yeah, it all bodes it all bodes well like i mean yeah he really is and we'll probably talk about it a little bit later but he really is handing over the fucking key to the kingdom like it's like really just here just carry on like there's not a whole lot for arna slot to do and yeah we'll work you're right we'll yeah. get into the arna slot in a minute but he's I mean, he's been given a free hit almost because I don't think anyone expects Slot oh. to do a you know a fantastic job, and obviously he's coming from you know a league extremely inferior to the Premier League. But we'll talk about that in a bit. But I will say I've watched like many that are watching this. I've watched so many videos this past week, and I've even watched the a video about the guy that did the mosaic. Like like it was like a six minute video about the the detail and the specifics and 
how his printing company was able to like get the mosaic and how he was using I think A3 now instead of A4 but the mosaic look magnificent yeah. it's a small thing but it makes yeah big difference. it makes such a such a huge deal to the atmosphere and he's talking about how when he when he started doing it it's because the atmosphere in Liverpool was like wasn't great yeah and he wanted to do something that was a little bit a little bit different but the stadium looks it looked unbelievable yeah. it really did I mean, but it was a, a fantastic a fantastic day wish I was there but it was pretty good at BD Riley's. We had a good, not comparable, but we had a good time. Yeah, it looked very good. Everything it looked went packed. very well. But I couldn't make it here, but so he's um, he's kind of gone. I think I think he's going to be back often. I don't think he's going to be able to stay away much from the city. Mm. Um, he's going to be. Um, there's a big event I, for I, him. I think. I think he'll be intelligent week. enough not to linger, though. That's what I would hope, and I think I oh, would agree 100%. with you. You don't uh, want a uh, manager yeah. showing up every, yeah, yeah, like yeah. an ex-manager showing yeah. up. I don't think he will. Like the Fergie, I don't think the Fergie. Yeah, that, that didn't help my. At, at Man all. United, no. And he's still doing it. Yeah. And I get it. He's addicted. It's his club. He was fantastic there, and uh, but I don't think the Fergie being at Man United nearly every single game helps him help. one bit. No. And you're right. Yeah, I would think Klopp isn't the kind of guy that's going to be like, you know, in the stand. Yeah, I'd be time, I'd be surprised so. to see him there the first day of the season. I think it'll be sometime next year before you see he, him. Yeah, yeah, I think he'll. I think he'll be. I think he'll be smart enough to to, to, to allow that time uh-huh. for somebody else to just on grab that, hold of this and and run on. He with. says he's gonna. He take says a year he's off. gonna. He says he's gonna take a year off. Now, last time he said that he was at <laughs> Dortmund, and he was gonna take a year off, and then he left Dortmund. I think in May. And then he was in at Liverpool in what October? Yeah, October and eight. Fifteen? Yeah. Do you think he's gonna take a year off? Or do you think, I think the, he the will. temptation is gonna No, I, th- I think I think he will. I think um, I think he will. I think the the whole family situation for him, uh, granddad and all that sort of carry on, I think he'll I think he is gonna he, I think he is going to um, to take that time. One of the reasons I think Probably he'll take that time more so than he did at Dortmund. I think it was more probably more intense mm-hmm. being the Liverpool manager. Um, even yeah. as small as no winter break, mm-hmm. you know you're constantly on. So he was he was basically you know he basically got a month off every year. Uh, whereas I think in Dortmund he probably got a little bit more time. So I think you spread that out over nine years. I think he, I, t- I do think he'll probably take the full year off, and then he'll come back and he'll, um, he'll jump back into management refreshed, uh, just like he was when he took over Liverpool. And I think whoever gets him is going to get a hell of a manager. They're going to be in for a wonderful fucking few years, and uh, <laughs> you know he's going to do a, he's going to do a magnificent job wherever he, wherever he ends up. From all the all the footage, all the interviews I've watched over the past week, the one thing that stands out to me was the interview he did with, um, I don't know if you've seen it, he did an interview with Paul from Redman TV, mm. which was magnificent. That's probably my favourite of the lot because it's so natural and it's like it's almost like two mates in a conversation. It's yeah. really good. And there's this moment where Paul says, oh, you're looking forward to, to seeing your grandchild and Amelia Klopp's like, yeah! You know, yeah. you could see the joy yeah, in his yeah, face yeah. that... It's something he genuinely cannot wait yeah. to be done with everything so that he can see his grandchild. And it's, I mean, it's been noticeable as well, not just this past weekend, but maybe over the past two weeks that he does. He looks like the weight has been lifted from his shoulders. Yeah, yeah. He looked like a man, like completely exhausted, ready to leave on the spot like three weeks yeah. ago. I mean, he looked like a man who wanted to just leave the next day. But now, not just the Wolves game, but the couple of games before that, and of course this past week, I mean, he looks 10 years younger <laughs> than what he did. Yeah, even him walking like into that interview and months. he was like, oh, I'm late. And he was like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just him yeah. cracking jokes like that. It'd have been a, you know, it had been a little while since he cracked this sort of a joke yeah. with, the, with, the, with the media and things like that. So, yeah, as I say, I think he, he, he deserves it. He done a wonderful job. Wonderful nine years. Gave it every last bit he had. He won everything. Um, yeah, enjoy your break, Jorgen. And uh, 
yeah, I, I mean, it'll be terrible if we, whoever we, whoever he manages, if, uh, I mean, it'll be terrible, well, it probably won't be terrible, it'll be a great occasion if he was to go to, I don't know where, I don't know, I don't know where he'd go, but maybe Valencia I mean, I prefer, like yeah, I mean, I would, I would uh, being selfish, I would prefer him to go to a team that Liverpool don't have a chance ever of playing. Yeah. Champions it's probably going to be a team in the MLS, but that's not likely. Yeah. And it's not going to be Saudi. But wherever he goes, I mean, he says it's not going to be another club in England. Just wishing the best of luck. Um, I know we did a little bit about this a couple of weeks ago, but off the cuff, no thinking, if you were to pick one moment that stands out for you, and there's a lot of moments, is there any one in particular that so comes to So one from just him or one from just his era? One from... His era, at his era at Liverpool. I think. I mean, they're the, they're the they're kind of the obvious ones, aren't they? But I, I you know I think I'm going to go with the old softy in me. I think I'm going to go when 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 we won the Champions League. I think that embrace between himself and Henderson yeah. uh, really stood out. How much it meant to him how much it meant to Henderson and how much they meant to one another. I think it was a very human father-son sort of weird moment and I think a really sort of... Uh, it personified sort of his tenure yeah. uh, and it just came to a big culmination in winning, winning the Champions League. I think that, yeah, that embrace and that relief and that release of pure fucking joy when we got the Champions League, I'd say that's probably the one for me. Okay. It's a, I mean, there's so many. Yeah. And I mean, that yeah. is that, that is how good it's been over the last nine years. There yeah. are so many moments um, that you can pick from. You could ask, you know, you could gather together like a hundred people huh. at the pub, and you're going to get a lot of different answers. Yeah. There are so many different fantastic moments, but to circle this all back to Klopp's speech this is just the beginning right yeah. Liverpool as a club it, do, it does override it. it is the bigger factor we do move on we've had great managers before right we will get one again that could be Arne Slot now it could be everyone now it's all Arne Slot it's a you know what, what's his past what's his you know his tactics. What's his? How's his passion? How does he work with the fans? How does he work with the players? What kind of football does he play? You know, how does he work with the media? What? You know, there's all these questions, and I know Pep Linders for one. You know, speaks massively highly of Slot, and from reading, a lot of people speak extremely highly of Slot. Say he's got fantastic talent, fantastic ability for nurturing younger players, but also for getting results and. He, he, he's extremely passionate about connecting the fans with the team as well but you know there are some buts he's coming from the, the Dutch league it's yeah. not that competitive he got into Europe a couple of times hasn't done great but he is working with a fantastic base here a fantastic group of players a fantastic group of young players that it's well, almost going back to what I said earlier. It's kind of a free shot for him. I don't think many people are expecting him to to do as well as Klopp did, and that's completely right, as, as they should. Yeah, no, I don't think. Yeah, look, look at it. We'd be we'd be fucking fools to sit here and go, oh yeah, he's going to win. Right. He'll end up winning all the trophies like Klopp did. You know, I, yeah. I, I think that'd be foolish, and I think anybody that has that sort of mentality is like away with the fairies. Uh -huh. You know, you need to. And if it, yeah. if it happens that way. Cool. Brilliant. Right, but you can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You can't go in with that with that mindset. Yeah. The one thing I will say, and this may come across as a little bit harsh, is that he hasn't much to fucking do. He's been given a very, very good squad mm -hmm. to work. Well, you think of all those young players that have come through, the experience that they gained, the experience that they gained from this season full pre-season with the lads like some of those lads like the likes of Connor Bradley now the likes of Kwanzaa um, the young Clark fella these are lads now that are going to be going into the next pre-season thinking I've got you know I, I don't think I'm a squad player here I think I can I can get in I can force my way into the team it's, 
Clark may be a bit of a stretch now, but the other two, certainly. Yeah. You know, Bradley Bradley and Kwanzaa are definitely two that are going to be knocking on the door. So he's got, he's got a very good squad to work with. He's got an unbelievable structure in place. Like, I, I was reading somewhere where they were talking, you know, the old boat, boot room used to be, you know, fucking Ronnie Moran, uh, Kenny Dog Leash, Roy Evans, the, the Roy Evans that sort of, yeah. Now it's, you know, the new board of the, you know, the, what's his, Edwards and mm-hmm. uh, the new sporting director. So he, and people feel really, really good about that, that in place. So I think everything is in place for him to be successful. And I don't, honestly, I, as I said, this might be a little bit harsh, but if he can't make it with this squad, there's not much hope for him in football. Well, he's got. This goes with any manager coming into a club. He's obviously going to have some big decisions to make early on as well. I think. I mean, it's certainly evolution rather than revolution with this because he, number one, the tactics, the way he plays, the setup which was one of the, the decisions of why we went with slot over Amarin and other managers, for example, is he plays a very similar setup, right? So it's not foreign to him. He can come in and say, okay, you know, yeah. you know this, is very, this is very similar to what I've done before, but I think it's something that, you know, and as Liverpool fans, we're very patient. Unlike, yeah. not to name <laughs> names, but I will, Chelsea, yeah, yeah. for example. Even Man United, right, recently. Yeah. I mean, they have gone through managers, and maybe if a couple of those managers were given a bit more time, might have done better. But I think we will be patient, and I think the fans will have to wait. And there will be some, there will be some learning curves. You know, there will be some times where we won't get the results we want. Um, we might not challenge for the league next season, and I'm completely fine with that. As long as we're we're building towards something, there are maybe minor minor changes that can happen here and there. But we've got to sit back and we've got to wait, and we've got to be patient with this because it might it might take a little bit of time. But it but there will be a moment, and there always is with any manager. There'll be a moment where we'll be like, yeah, this is the guy. Or this is not the guy. Or well, this is not the guy. <laughs> and I think for me, with Klopp, the West Brom was a big moment for me because I remember the, the game before, a lot of fans were... Or it was, it was either the game before or the game previous to that. A lot of fans had left early and the fans stayed around for West Brom. Yeah. And then we scored that last-minute equaliser. And then he gathers... It's, you know, it's home game, Anfield, West Brom. It wasn't a game, you know, it wasn't the win anything or anything sure. like that. And then he gathers everyone in front of the cop, celebrates, and yeah. a lot of uh, commentators and media were all over that. Like, what is he doing? Why is he celebrating for a draw against West Brom? But it was, it made sense. He was there. He was starting something. And he was, it's not just about me. It's not just about the team, but it's about us and the fans. Right? We're a partnership here, and if we work together and we stick together then great things are going to happen and slot will need not you know not that moment but it's going to need there's going to be a moment yeah. where you're going to be like yeah that's the guy yeah. this we're going to stick with this guy because we've seen something here that makes us believe yeah i think that's the key right i think that i think that's the key and as long i think liverpool fans are intelligent enough or the vast majority of them at least are intelligent enough to to be able to recognise and go, okay, well, it's going in the right direction. Yeah. It may not be perfect, that we may not be winning as much as we want to be winning, but this thing looks like there's some sort of sense to it, and we're just, you know, working towards something. Um, and as long as he can do that, I think Liverpool fans will um, will embrace him and give him the time that he needs, and they'll certainly support him. Um, that's we know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. Um, even me, grumpy old fucker that I am. You ain't that old. Come you on. know, you, you kind of give me a who, who the fuck is this fella <laughs> sort of attitude a few weeks ago. He, you know, now I'm like, you know, you got to get behind him. He's a new manager now. You, you got to. Well, he wasn't someone, you know, yeah. up until a week, two weeks before he got the job. He wasn't anyone's list. No, it was all him. Alonso, Amaran, it might be Nagelsmann. It, it, but. The Zerbi. The Zerbi, right? Those were yeah. probably the main ones. 
Arne Slot came out of nowhere and he he appeared one day on some betting odds. Yeah. And I remember seeing a name and like, what's all this about? And then I think it was in the, um, it might have been David Ornstein in the Athletic mentioned that Liverpool will be looking at someone who might not be the most popular choice. But that's very FSG, isn't it, though? It is like that, though, right? That's how they operate. It's It's the best way to do business. It's never really really the obvious choice. Mm -hmm. You know, there's very few times where you think, Alisson... Alisson and Van Dijk are kind of really, in my opinion, the only really two super fucking nailed on obvious people where the yeah. fans were crying out saying, please sign Van Dijk, <laughs> please sign Alisson. And yeah. they did. Yeah. And then you kind of, you know, you were looking at, you know, even Fabinho, as good as he was. Well, he came out of nowhere. He came out of fucking nowhere. One yeah. May afternoon, all of a sudden, it was like, oh, well, even, signed even Salah, no one was crying out for Salah. Yeah, no, and, and I was going to I was gonna yeah. touch on him too, even the price, you know, 35 million quid or 36 million quid. Salah was kind of like, oh, well, he didn't cut it at Chelsea. He's been playing all right at Roma. Yeah. He's been on loan a couple of different places. Like, oh, what's going on here? Um, and yeah, and if you listen back, I'd say to a few people back then, there would have been there would have been some other name that was super popular and kind of the the, the kind of the the buzz name, you know. And we don't we don't and that that was always I was worried about with Alonso was he was the obvious he was the obvious and popular choice, and FSG rarely rarely did that. And we just uh, we watched the Atlanta against. Leverkusen today in Atlanta. What a game! Whoa, they were magnificent. They were a good fucking team. really, really good. And so Leverkusen and Alonso, his, you know, I don't know if I would have liked to have seen them go unbeaten. Because I'm all I care about is Liverpool, but I don't know if I'm that bothered. But no, 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 no. Part of me is disappointed. Football history, right? Little part of me is disappointed. But um, yeah, I mean, slot. And it's going to be interesting. Of course, there's no more. Liverpool games now, but that doesn't mean that there's not going to be a lot of drama over the part over the next couple of months with outgoings and incomings. Yeah. We yeah. know that's going to happen. It's pure speculation and guesswork at the moment for for what that's going to happen. But um, do you think there's anything that you see within the team, the first team specifically, that needs to be? You know, you're on a slot, you're coming in, you look at the first 11, you're like, I need to improve this part. I need to upgrade this position. Is there anything that stands out? Yeah, there's two. There's two? Yeah. Uh, And, well, well, two depending on everything remains the same. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, um, I think we could probably, if Virgil commits himself Uh long term, I think we can afford then to find a young fella. Yeah. uh, To back up. Center backs, yeah. Uh, replace Matip. Well, Matip is going, yeah. so they, they so they got to bring someone. So in. yeah. Now, if Virgil was to say, "Okay, I'm out of here," then we need to address that, right? We will need a big center half to come in, and we'll need to address that. Yeah. Now, if everything remains the same with Virgil and he says and blah 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 blah, then I think the two major positions that need to be addressed is uh, number six. We need an upgrade to Endo. Endo's been very very good. He, yep. he had an outstanding season. I was probably as harsh critic in the first few games as like I didn't understand it. I was like, "What the fuck are we doing?" It completely turned me around. Where I was near the end of the season, going, "Where the fuck is Endo? How come he's not playing?" Right. Yeah. So full circle with him. Yeah. So he has been very, very good. But I do think in order for us to challenge for major honours, we're going to need to upgrade that position. Yep. And then we need a number nine. That's I. I. I I'll fight whoever wants to fight me on that. Uh, we which need a centre forward. Which is, I knew you. Uh, I mean, of course, I knew that was what was going to be yeah. said. And what's funny, if we think about the start of the 23-24 season, like last summer, when we were talking about what we needed, it was a number six, and it was probably another striker. Yeah. And it's the same. Yeah. We knew we needed them, and it's probably been, a, you know, there's been many, you know, there's been a few reasons, but that is a big part of it. And I would agree with you. I think those are the two that if we're going to spend a lot of money we need a top quality. We need a Rodri. We need a Rice. We need that player, and we need another striker. Yeah. You know, whether Nunes stays, goes, whatever. We need someone else that is going to compete up there because we've been relying on Mo Salah for so long, and Jota. And Jota is magnificent, but 
if you know having them both fit at the same time you know Salah got his first injury this past season Jota unfortunately has injury problems but they're the only two out of those you know Diaz Gakpo Nunes Salah Jota Salah and Jota are the only two you can really rely on that they're going to get you goals yeah. and we need someone else we need yeah, yeah. We, we need, need someone we need, else we need it we need it we, we absolutely and I know I'll get abuse about this and Nunes people love Nunes and he works hard you won't he get abuse around, but he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't score enough goals end of story uh, number nine is about putting the ball in the back of the fucking net mm-hmm. and we need a fella now to go alongside Jada, go alongside Salah put the ball in the net regularly um, so yeah th- those would be if, if I were him th- those would be the first two now maybe but, slot you know if Nunes does stay well it could be a good thing who know you, you don't know yeah maybe. so I don't know enough about slot and how so he we'll plays to, to say but I don't I don't know of any fucking manager that would go no I don't need a fella that puts the ball in the back right. of the net 20 times a season guaranteed uh, yep. <laughs> that's, 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 it's as simple as that. It's, it's, it's like, don't yeah. concede goals, have yeah. a great goalkeeper, <laughs> yeah. score goals, yeah. and you'll be all right. on, and you, you'll be yeah. pretty good. You're halfway there. You're with halfway that. there. It's going to yeah. it's gonna help you. So, All right. We will wrap this up. Uh, we've said thank you to Jurgen Klopp a lot. He's probably not going to watch this, but anyway, yeah. thank you, Jurgen Klopp. Thank you. Um, any other words? Anything for now? No, we miss Glenn. Where's Glenn? Poor Glenn. He'll be back. Yeah, he's having a bit of a soul. Yeah, if you're missing Glenn, he'll be back soon. Yeah. Yeah, he's not happy. But that's all right. That's good. It's yeah, okay. We'll have him on soon. That's okay. He'll, he'll, he'll be back soon. But you looking um, forward? No, actually. Yeah. You're looking forward to the, so the Euros, the squad. Fuck England yes. Squad. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the Euros. Um, the England, well, the provisional squad, I think six or seven has to be cut from it. Um, I love the... Even though he might not make the squad, like the official squad, I love that Kwanzaa is yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. I love that Curtis Jones is there. Um, on Curtis Jones, I think Jones is there because he he can play that six position alongside Rice. And that, that there is an opportunity there in the friendlies that he can play. He played for the under twenty ones. Yeah. He did a fantastic job. No doubt, that's part of the reason plus how good he's been for Liverpool. He has had the injuries. He hasn't been great since he's been back. But there is an opportunity for him in the friendlies to prove himself. So I love that Curtis Jones, uh, Gomez, who I think will definitely go. He should go. And he might start as left back. England have a problem with the well, left Trippier back position. Trippier got injured today too, Trippier didn't he? got injured in that fucking ridiculous yeah, friendly. Well, the the Newcastle yeah. Spurs in Australia. Um, uh, yeah, we it? know about the money, but bloody hell. Three days after the end of the or four days after the end of the league. It's, it's, it's insane. But yeah, then, then you different. have you have Luke Shaw in England squad, who's barely played. He's been yeah. injured. He's, and even Southgate, in his press conference, said he's unlikely to go anyway. So there is there's a good yeah, chance. Gomez, Gomez that Gomez go. might start, start left back. I know we'll get we'll, we'll definitely get comments on this for but. England, and then Trent, of course. Um, I don't think he's going to start, start Trent. I mean, Walker's going to start right back. I don't think he's going to... I mean, he might put Trent alongside Rice, but I'm happy for the Liverpool lads. I think England have a really good chance at this. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I love the Euros. I love the World Cup. I'm, I'm ready yeah. for it. So, yeah, it should be... Just, uh, this be, what was that? What was that? Like? <laughs> the, it's the Irish man and me going, oh, jeez, the thoughts of fucking England winning it. <laughs> uh, well, you're going to be out of the country, so. I know. am, yeah. Will you, be, will you be back for the final then? Uh, I w- that's uh, start of July, is it? Yeah, July. Yeah, I'll be back for, I'll be back for the final. So so when shit, England, I didn't even when realize. England so I'll be over there for the, for yeah. the Euro. I didn't even realize Yeah, you'll that, be there for know. the Euros. So that'll be good. But, but good news is, when England make the final... You're going to be back, so you can come yeah, celebrate. Come watch, come watch yeah, it. yeah, come watch uh, England versus Scotland. Yeah, oh, imagine. <laughs> like that, I mean, that is. I mean, that's. You think of Leicester winning the league? The odds on that. Yeah. The odds on an England Scotland final. I mean, oh, that's yeah. one hell of a bet builder. Yeah. That would be. Yeah, England will never make the final. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah! All right, like, subscribe. Buy stuff from Up The Reds. I'll put the link in the description because they make fantastic gear. Other than that, have a good one. Cheers. Good luck, lads. Bye.